New Beer Thursday! Woo! And we're at the Crooked Stave Barrel Cellar with Mr. Chad Jacobson. What's going on, Chad? How's it going, guys? Good. Um, understand you just won yourself a little uh, silver medal at the Great American Beer Festival. We're very happy to uh, take home a medal, to yeah. be able to participate, to be with all the other breweries, and get a Take a moment, moment to explain that second of your life where it was like, and silver for. Sentience. Yes. And you were like, oh my god, he said my beer. Did you like th think maybe you should run up or did you just it's, like. It definitely takes a minute. To you're, process? You're, you're sitting there and it's like, sentience, crooked stave. Like, yeah, that's our brewery. Yeah. <laughs> Is it kind of one of those moments like when you're like a goofy dude and you're asking a girl out and then you expect that she's going to say no and she says yes, but you just. Uh, Already assumed she said no, and you kind of go down that route. Like you're just assuming another beer is gonna I get have, named. I have so. no idea you what you're talking you're like, about. Oh, I'm so sad. Yeah. No, I've never been there before. I don't know. Nice. Yes. Both of you. Uh, but anyways, we are currently uh, drinking a uh, sentience. Uh, what's going on with this beer here? Well, first, before you say anything, let's cheers so that I can drink while you talk. Ah, yeah, good call. So, cheers. 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 Congratulations. Congratulations. Cheers. Uh, this is a really fun beer that we did. Bourbon barrel aged sour quad. Mm -hmm. So. Here at Cricket Stave. That's like three or four different styles all together. It's awesome. Yeah. yeah. No, it's like a bunch <laughs> yes. of no styles. Just right. It's just, I mean, yeah. what's a quad? Right. Yeah. Exactly. Belgian quads. Yeah, actually. yeah. And we're not gonna we're not gonna offend the Belgians that watch our show. <laughs> no. Uh, don't argue. It doesn't even exist. <laughs> Fun beer. You know, being able to think outside the box, being able to do something different, um, being able to take. You know, a big beer that we brewed last November, throw it into fresh yeast bourbon barrels, and sour it up. Trying to go for the alternative flavors, look at it, and then kind of watch how it develops. It's a very neat beer for me. This beer is actually inspired by uh, a brewer that uh, I really hold to a high regard. I really appreciate the beers that he's brewing. I really love the creativity on this. Will Myers at Cambridge Brewing Company. Oh, nice. So I, I had his beer, Benevolence, about three years back from our Avery Sour Fest. That was the first time I'd met him. So, you know, for me, yeah. just being able to meet Will, I'm like, you know, like, and he's just this amazing down to earth. Guy. I had their Ozzy Manzi yesterday. Awesome. That is yeah, it's yeah, such a great beer. Like really out. I was just like, oh my god, they did a different Watchmen character. Yay! Yeah, they, they <laughs> took awesome. a they took a medal or two home. Uh, CBC Heather Ale. That's right. Yeah. 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 Third third year in a row. I actually think they've gotten a gold, a silver, and a bronze for that beer. Three yeah. years in a row. Only because I was on Twitter reading what Will was writing, I read that. Yeah, it was the same <laughs> thing. I, mean, I saw a retweet for that. So yeah, it was cool. Will was in here on Tuesday and got to be able to share the beer with him and be like. Hey Will, you know, benevolence, sentience, like the name, everything's kind of inspired by right on. That's how it works sometimes. Like yeah. Other brewers inspire you to do things. And, and well, that's a great part of what the craft beer community is about, and especially events like GABF, where you guys get to come together yeah. in this kind of a setting and try each other's beers and kind of get some inf inspiration like that. That's awesome. That's inspiration absolutely. and information. Right. Now, we just got back from um, Pros Brewing, actually. Now, uh, what, what's your relationship with them? Because they, um, I was kind of confused. Do they just produce wort for you? Do they ferment the beer? Are you just brewers with benefits, or are you in a long-term relationship? Exactly. Uh, how does that, how a bit of both. Exactly? Brewers with benefits. It's, it's the honeymoon stage, but we're also in a long-term relationship. Nice. Ah. Um, mm -hmm. Pros is phenomenal. Uh, for anyone who has been there, you guys were just there, so you've seen that system. You see how gorgeous it is. It's gorgeous. Uh, Great so beer. We're being able to brew a couple of our base beers at Pros. Uh, four of them. We've got two barrel aged saisons that we do. Uh, one of them is a new beer that we're coming out called Saison Ville Artisanal. Mm -hmm. It's old artisanal. 4.2% uh, Saison that's barrel aged in these barrels. As well, Surrette, which is our five grain rustic Saison. Being able to brew the beers there, which is phenomenal. And Bill I is an amazing brewer. He's a guy I've known for quite a while. He's a guy who's from CB Potts to Dry Dock, award winning brewer and now they've got their place at Prost. And it, it's fun uh, being able to go down and brew with Bill. It feels like a collaboration day every single time we're gonna brew down there. But yet being able to know that we have this very educated, really talented brewer who can just produce phenomenal clean beers for us to then be able to come back and I guess as a kind of considerate, you know, work our magic. We put it in the right. barrels, we've got our work with potato mice's yeast, and a certain amount of sour beer blended in with the saisons. Or and you guys are only like what, a mile or two apart? At best, it's 14 yeah. blocks down the way in Colorado, so you, yeah. our short. So yeah, so you, it it's, it's a great, it sounds like it's place. a great relationship. It's, it's similar awesome. to what you had with Funk Works. Yeah. And um, which was last year when we were here, we had you on with Funk Works and you know, when you guys were co-opting that, that brew house, but it's so cool to see that you've got your own place set up now and it's beautiful and packed out constantly. Apparently last night you guys were 
butts to nuts all over the place. And, yeah. yeah. And um, I, I saw a bunch of tweets on um, a bunch of tweets on Twitter um, about how awesome you guys handled that rush and how like this is this is how you handle a tasting room during JBF. So I mean, you guys That's killed funny. it. That's really cool. You know, I got to give it to our guys. I guess I've been down at GABF and doing a lot of that. I've gotten to kind of pull out from you know running the tap. Wednesday, you were like, "Peace out, bitches! I'm not even going to be here for this mess." I'm not going to admit to that. But maybe a little but bit. Maybe. And and we had a couple of brewers, uh, you know, pay their compliments and say like. Uh, Crooked Save Friday night. That's how you run a tap room. We're like, mm -hmm. really? You know, like, uh, <laughs> this has only been open a month. It's friends working in the tap room, other brewers and stuff. This nice. Year. So everyone from our graphic designer pulling through to our assistant brewer to all of us just kind of in there pouring. So, hey, what better place to be able to welcome friends in and you know, give them a great environment, great atmosphere. And that's why we opened the barrel cellar up. Last year when we had just a couple of years coming out by GABF, this year we've got another year under our belt. We've had the cellar reserve. So in the cellar reserve, we had a um, golden sour with peaches. We had blackberry petite sour, which actually we tried. I think a little bit of the black yeah, we sour. did. Yeah, we, we that's what we took that out of the barrel. Yeah, and then eventually we and then having it out. out of the bottle because I remember then, yeah we had it on the I had, well. yeah I remember how that tasted then and then tasting it out of the bottle again it was just like the age and the development and and how it and, and, and usually. And we talked about this last time, but usually beers like yours require years, and you're pumping these things out quick. Like you, you know how to work Britannomyces in a way that like makes that we, shit work. Like it's like bitches, kind of you need to get to work. But, but, but that's kind of the thing about the beers is you know we've really been dubbed like a, a sour brewer or a sour mm -hmm. brewery, and yeah, I mean from the looks of this place, that's my passion is right. in being able to create as many different flavorful, unique sour beers as we can. That's why we have the bases while we're trying to brew so much of them, so much of our relative word but we've only just started to be able to release sour beers recently of the 15 or I think 18 different beers we've released in the past year we've only got like four sour beers from under it's the 100% potato mice's beers that we're being able to do in you know primary fermentation in a couple weeks some secondary aging and then aging in the bottle right. those are the ones that are really going to age they're all going to age well but those are the yeah. ones that we're seeing age very well because when they're a year old they're only a year old whereas some of our barrel aged beers that are just coming out, they're, you know, a year and a half or so in the barrel, but then they're gonna have another couple of years on them. Right. And we're only just kind of getting that stage. We just had um, a release that's Sentience as part of our cellar reserve. Actually, the Sentience Cognac, which we've got to try, mm -hmm. and Oculus and Persona Speaking of which, why don't, we, why don't we take a second and we're gonna switch out and go and try the Cognac, cognac version Perfect. and to do a little bit of a side by side yeah, with let's, that. Let's taste both of them and be right, able cool. to compare and, and talk about them. Anymore, awesome. So. So now we have uh, we have the cognac version and the bourbon barrel aged version. And before we do anything, which one's your favorite and why? Personally, my favorite is the cognac. Okay. And it's more subtle. I'm not a very big in your face bourbon sort of guy in the beers. Right. I like this one. We did try and bring it down to be a little more subtle. We actually there's a little bit of uh, burgundy sour beer blended into both of them to kind of dry it out. But for me, the cognac has a very refined character. It's more of the French oak spices from the cognac barrels. Whereas the bourbon is very much a big bourbon marsh. In your a lot face. Of vanilla. Yeah, yeah. yeah the vanilla. Right on. I, I enjoy the subtleties in the cognac one a little bit more. All right. And since we're at GABF, you've got a two fist. Yeah, exactly. It's so cheers to two fisting and GABF and cognac and just clinking glasses cheers everywhere. Yes, it's yes, like, ah. Oh. That was awesome. Ah, I love the way this smells. And the, the you get a lot of the cognac aroma off the nose that it just works so well. And in the flavor too, you get that cognac. You I, I, I really feel I need, I need to have a cigar in my hand. Of. It has a very different tannic structure. Summer we just need to. Like the, the yeah, it. absolutely. It's like the way that it actually sits on your tongue is a little bit softer, you know? It's important oh, yeah. to showcase the difference. I mean, so in bourbon, you've got American oak barrels. American oak barrels, very much higher in uh, vanilla acid and these vanillins, which are the characteristics that give bourbon its very characteristic flavors. Sure, sure, sure. So you get a lot higher than that. Whereas on the other hand, on the cognac, you're using French oak, you have other more like translactones. Translactones are more sort of coconutty, sort of spicy in that characteristic. So in this, you're getting more of that sort of coconutty oak, uh, right. dry spice. Whereas in this mm -hmm. one, you're getting more marshmallow, vanilla, bourbon characteristics. I feel like right, I should right. be sitting in a big, like, puffy leather chair and a smoking jacket in my 
library with a fire roaring and a cigar in my hand as I you, you, you explain the finer notes of like etiquette to my children, you know? <laughs> it's like He's not here right now, he's probably drinking out in the tap room somewhere, but you just explained Dr. Bill's house, I think. <laughs> right? And I have a really probably a really dumb question. But the beer's brewed at be Prost. The yeah, I know, right? Keep going. The beer's brewed at Prost. Um, it's done brewing, it's fermented. Yep. Then what? Do you so uh, how does it get then, from there to here in so two we barrels? Then, we then crash it out, and we then have uh, totes. So big IBC totes. Okay. And what we're being able to do is we treat them just like you would a bright tank. So they get a heat kill on them. They then get a final rinse sanitizer on them. They then get purged with CO2. And we fill them up from the bottom. We take those to the fork, tri- fork truck, lift them onto the truck, head back up here. It's not even a mile from Bill's back right. to here. And then immediately we're transferring them either into here give or take which base beer it is, or right. into some of the different barrels in here. Okay. And that's how we're keeping the barrel. The smaller barrels tend to be the sour beers and stuff we're doing. The larger ones actually not inoculating with any lactorpedium, just keeping uh, Brett base beers. Nice. We use those for blending in different ways, or for the base beer here, a little bit of sour beer blended in. Okay. Um, it, it really depends on which one it is. We realize that GABF is the busiest week of the year for you guys here in Denver, and we really appreciate you taking some time out doing a show with us again and I mean for you those of you who have watched the show for the last year or so you know we did a show here last year with, with Chad um, and to me that speaks to how impressed we are by your the stuff you're doing is because there are a boatload of breweries that we could have gone to and done shows but it was really important to me to come here and do a kind of a follow up now that you're in Denver proper you've got your own place set up and all this like amazing equipment going like Crooked Stave is really, I think, going to redefine how Britannomyces and and beers are made, and I'm just I'm so excited to have been a, like been aware of that process from the it. beginning, yeah, right? Like absolutely. I feel like I came into the MLM at the beginning. You know? Being able to watch the evolution is really, really right. great, especially when it comes to the beer. It's fun. You actually both just touched on two of the things. One of the important things is that the brewery, uh, the model behind the brewery, is very much built on evolution. It's built on the idea that beers change, and we're going to change with the beers. Our, our consumers, our fans, our friends, they, they change, they change, the palates change what they want, and we want to always be changing with them. We want to be continuing to, to reinvent ourselves. It's part of the craft brewing industry, it's right. really nice. We create beers that we love to drink, mm-hmm. right? But also, I mean, very much a part of our model is the fact that we want to make beers that people think about, that people talk about. So the time that someone enjoys the beer, that's really the important part to me. And as much enjoyment as we can really build into a beer is super important. And it's not original thought by any means on my part. That's what a lot of the brewers are starting to do. And so we hope that we can achieve that. We hope that we can continue to create flavors and new flavors and and turn drinkers on to different things. And that's been one of the coolest things about having the barrel cellar. You know, this is our, we've been open for a little over a month now. I think we're right. on week five or six in here. Nice. And so one of the things that's been so cool is it's it's our first face, it's our first chance to be able to bring people in to serve beers. This beer is very much a beer that we did, very low carbonation because it's the way we like to drink it. Mm-hmm. We don't want just the same high carbonation. In our tap room, we can educate customers, we can bring right. them in. You know, they're our friends, we're able to talk to them. Well, I think education's huge in what we're getting out of the barrels. I think one of the things that really gets me about craft breweries as a whole is that, you know, you, you, th- you think about the big three, the BMC and whatever, and those are that's beer that's made, and it's, techni- it's brewed technically perfect, it's consistent, whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, but when you come into a place like this, Every beer you drink is an expression of something from the brewer because obviously you're going to brew beers that you want to drink. Yeah. This is this is basically your sandbox. It's your playground. It's what you want to do, and people can either fall in line and love it and recognize the awesome, or they can go buy beer somewhere else. And either way, that's fine. Like they go and explore and do whatever. And so you're going to hit your market that, that people that like it and don't like it or whatever. But it is ultimately an expression, and it's almost like by drinking the beers, you almost get to know a little bit about the brewer. And that's that's something I really appreciate about the craft beer industry is that it's like just drinking the beers is enough to get a sense of what the brewer has going on in his head and what his likes and dislikes are. And it's almost like you become friends with him by popping the bottle and drinking it, you know? And and I think that your your beers here, especially with the Brookhannomyces project that you have, having gotten to know you myself, over the last few years, like 
I, I, I see uh, parts of you in each of these beers, you know, and I, parts I, of your personality. You understand the right, and it's, it, it does, and it really helps you appreciate that beer so much more. It is, it is, it's a sense of place, and it's a sense of brewery. I love having beers from friends at Avery, or Great mm -hmm. Divide, or, you know, if we start talking about someone sends me some Captain Lawrence beers or anything like that, or just tasting Vinny's beers, and it's like, you know, you, you taste this, and I know that Vinny's got a bunch of other employees who work for him, other guys doing things. He's very, very connected to his process, right. and I taste it, I'm like, you know, there's a little bit of Vinny in every bottle. This is, this is for good stave, this is very much a connection to my use with potato mice. The way we're looking at beers, my flavors, and, and what we're being able to put together. Right. And I think that's a that's a big statement as to why it's so important to try to get to GABF at least once in your beer drinking life Absolutely. because you have that opportunity to go and talk to the brewers behind, behind them and yeah. and see what their personalities are like and kind of get a sense of like and they love questions and I mean granted always, always. they may seem a little bit tired and whatever because this was like a week from hell but yet or heaven right I mean yeah I mean as far as like the work goes and the like. It's awesome, don't get me wrong, but oh my God, yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, but you know, you can go up to Vinny on Saturday afternoon and he's dealt with 10,000 people over the course of the weekend, but he still has a smile on his face and he's still willing to talk about his beers and he's still like happy that you're interested in drinking his beers. Well, I, I think another part of that though is also, yeah, I, 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 you know, I think it's nice for brewers when they have someone kind of come up to them and say, wow, I really enjoy your beer. This is an expression of your personality, as opposed to someone coming up coming up and saying, hey, that's really good. And yeah, I mean, it's, yeah, you exactly. Bears, you got bears here, don't you? Bear, hi. Do you have something hoppy? Hey. Who are you? I'll chat with you. What's your name? Yeah. yeah. So, it's, Anyways. yeah. I, I think that we've, uh, seen a very good deal of very educated consumers and each year at GABF more and more educated consumers. I'm extremely impressed with people are there. It's great. I try and take time with every single person who comes by because you know what they're the one making what we're doing a success. Uh, yeah. Absolutely. And, and, yeah. and being able to do it. Without other people enjoying our beers I would just be making a bunch of beer and drinking it by myself. and break. You would have the most yeah. ultimate homebrewing setup ever. <laughs> so. well, and, and I don't know. I would yeah. also, so much beer. Like, I, I need to have homebrew uh, parties. Yeah, I would also assume that you know, if people are familiar with who you are and what you're doing, then you're going to have a fairly educated person coming up to you and asking you questions and asking you about your beer because you know what you do, like I said, is, is a pretty unique. I mean, I'm not really familiar with any other kind of breweries who do what you do. And so they, I imagine that you have people who also have a pretty unique perspective on you know, beer and, like I said, you know. Yeah, and I mean, uh, your like your style of beer is a very acquired taste. It's not every beer drinker is going to like what you have to offer. And, and we, we see that in our tap room. We see the people coming in. And they already know about the brand. They've been here a couple of times. Or they're like, you know, hey, who's Chad? I want to talk to them about Britannomyces and stuff like that. So um, it, it very much does work really well. And I think we've done a good job being able to kind of acquire that knowledge, pass it on, and keep consumers who are very passion-driven. It, it's unbelievable the amount of passion from the people who walk in here. Mm -hmm. so Absolutely. It's well, like no other, I think. Definitely. Chad, again, thanks very much. We're gonna let you get back to your adoring fans who are filling up the brew house. And uh, until the next year, I guess, we'll see you again. Yep. Probably won't do a show with you again, because three yes, years is it's too much. It's no, too it's much. not. You mean no, we can't not. have a yearly sort of anniversary show? I don't know, we'll see what beers you have out. Okay. If you pass the test, maybe. Get another medal? Get another medal? <laughs> yeah, get another medal. It's not about medals. It's not about what it's you making, did this year. It's, it's about making, what you're doing next year. I'm making good beers. <laughs> All right, there you Let go. Let me tell you what's in the barrels. <laughs> nice, nice. All right, well, as always, stay safe and drink beer. And Chad, cheers. Cheers, you guys.